Today, we're talking about something pretty exciting. Figma has announced Smart Animate. Now, Smart Animate is a similar feature to Envision Studio or Adobe XD's, their own version of Smart Animate, where you can have layers move, scale, and uh, interact more dynamically between frames than you previously could. By default, Figma has instant or dissolved transitions and uh, features for modals, but now we have the ability to create truly dynamic animations uh, just by naming your layers and then moving them between the different frames. Figma will then interpolate the position, the scales, all the all the drop shadows and features of that layer, uh, and it will move them from uh, frame to frame, creating a fully detailed animation. They've released a really great blog post, which I'll link in the description, documenting their design process, creating this smart animate feature uh, to fit Figma's UI and user interaction patterns that we all have uh, come to love and know. Today in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the examples they've put out, as well as do a quick demo on how you can implement this feature yourself. So let's just jump right in. I'm really excited about this feature. It's one of the things that I've been wanting to, to see in Figma for a long time now. Let's take a look at this simple page transition. Go ahead, pop that up in the preview mode. So right now we see just a simple screen, right? Nothing fancy, we can scroll. If we press here, we'll get a really slick modern transition where the thumbnail scales up to be the header image on the secondary page. And that's done with just two frames, two prototype links forward and backwards. And all they've done is they've selected the smart animate animation feature and it is taking care of the rest. It has interpolated this layer to scale up, change its position, uh, fade in other text, fade out text, and create a really cool, sleek, modern animation that is fully dynamic. I mean, we can come in here and move stuff around, go ahead and press play again, and we can still see it does the same thing. I mean, it's it's so cool, it's so awesome. Uh, they've got some more complex examples. Take a look at uh, take a look at this card expansion one. You're not limited to to just moving layers around. You can do other interactions as well. So you see here, we're changing the layer style. We're uh, masking text and moving other layers down. We also then can do smaller interactions. If you can see that heart, when I click scales up and scales down, and you can see they uh, accomplish that by having two transition frames where there is a click, it then scales up, it's expanded, and now it's back to normal. And that is how they are accomplishing that pulsing heart animation, just by using frames essentially as, a, as keyframes. You can kind of think as a, you can kind of think of a, a frame as a, an animation keyframe. Just pretty cool, it's really easy to work with. And if you've used Envision Studio or Adobe XD's, their version of Smart Animate, it works the same way. All these systems seem to do the same kind of keyframe based animation using the art border frames as those keyframes. Let's take a look at something a bit different though because they've also added a different kind of interaction pattern for Smart Animation features and that's called uh, dragging. So we have the default, you can click on a layer, but we also have the ability to drag a layer and that gives us some really nice realistic interaction where say we have a list of items and we want to delete them. Uh, iOS has a user interaction pattern where you can swipe to delete and that exists here as well. We do that just by clicking and dragging and we have full control over the drag animation. You can see the icons are animating and rotating and we have full uh, user control of this. We also can just flick and that will do it as well. And then we can press there and we get a really sleek uh, delayed animation. That's accomplished by using the auto delay feature after delay that will animate to the next frame after a certain amount of time. And that can be done to give you that really cool, uh, almost uh, scheduled animation that you maybe couldn't get by forcing the user to interact with the interface. Oh, this is a really cool one too, uh, using the drag feature as well as 
the smart animation features, you can create some really convincing animations here. We can, we can drag down these cards, having full control over what's happening. And then we also can change pages as well. I mean, just super powerful. You can see the dots are moving as well, and they're doing it in sequence. It's because it's smart enough to know that, hey, these dots are in the same position and we're just changing colors. We can do that without having to do any jarring animation changes. It's so, so cool. So I think you've got the gist of how this feature works. Let me show you how you would implement that. So this is a frame that I have, nothing else in this file, and we're gonna animate this dropdown. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate this frame and this is gonna be my ending position. I want the drop down with the arrow pointing up and the list being visible, but I wanna start with just an, uh, uh, a button without a drop down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the arrow so that way it's pointing down. And I'm going to just drag the drop down so it's one pixel and I'm gonna change the opacity to zero and then I'm going to go into the prototype view. I'm gonna select the button. I'm gonna click and drag to this frame. You'll see that in the second frame, the button is highlighted. This is a good way to debug your smart animation features. When you have a layer selected, uh, you can see that layer in other frames. This is helpful where if you have a layer that doesn't have any opacity, it's still outlined so you can see where that object will be in the frame in which you're animating to. But now that I have my button selected, I've created my transition. I wanna change the transition type from instant to smart animate. I'm gonna change the easing to in and out. I'm gonna leave the time alone, that should be fine. And just like that, we should be good to go. So if I go ahead and preview this, we should have a simple drop down button that when I click, it shows a drop down. And if we create another transition back to the beginning, again with the smart animate, then we'll be able to toggle this button on and off. Really easy, really powerful. I mean, you saw it took maybe 30 seconds to create. And as long as you are smart with how you lay out your layers and how big your files are, you can do some really powerful micro interactions or even full, full blown software interactions in, in this just simple, just simple to use system. It's, it's really great. Very excited to see this in Figma. I think it's gonna really create uh, much more convincing uh, prototypes as well as remove the need to pull out your animation into After Effects just to show some micro, inter micro uh, interaction patterns. Like for this dropdown, for example, I used to have to take this out, maybe bring it to Envision Studio, maybe use After Effects just to show, hey, I want the dropdown arrow to spin, I want the, the menu to scale. But now we can create these and record them in After Effects, or record them in Figma without having to go to any other external tool. And that's gonna be super great. Figma also announced recently that they're working on their smart layout feature, and this will be an amazing addition if it works uh, with Smart Animate because it allows you to have layers reference their responsive position to other layers. So right now we have the ability to say, hey, I want this to be anchored to the top and left of this frame, but we'll be able to do that for other objects. So if I had a list of, of squares, and I deleted this square here, it would automatically move these squares back with the correct padding. If we had that feature with Smart Animate, oh man, that's gonna be that's gonna be so powerful and I can't wait to see how they integrate those two systems. Uh, needless to say, when that system comes out, I'll be sure to get a video out showing how to use the Smart Layout system and then how we can use those systems in tandem. But for now, go use this system. It's out right now, it's out today as of this video. Take a look at it, let me know what you think, uh, and definitely read the blog posts that they wrote. Uh, they go into a lot of design detail about how they created the system, why they did what they did, and how they plan to extend it. This is just version one of the system. Uh, until next time, I'm Max.